Praise the name of Jesus. Let's turn today. Paradise now, church. Midweek teach. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to start reading in verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, we've heard this scripture read many times. There's always something to be had, isn't there? There's always something to be found that we missed or overlooked. Or I titled, titled that message today, You Never Can Tell. So la vie, say the old folk, he goes to show you never can tell. You never can tell, can you? Uh... Who's really walking with the Lord at times and who's going to be saved? And it says here in verse 21, for everyone, or should I say not everyone, who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. See, that's the, that's the only one that's going to enter the kingdom. He, he calls it down, doesn't he? These are the words of the Lord Jesus. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, go on, Jesus, Lord. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So, once again, Jesus has a Father, in not This is red writing. Jesus has a Father. Hey. My Father makes it so clear. We have to do Father's will. And we know where Father's will is found, don't we? Father's will is found in John 14. Go over to John 14. And we start reading in twenty one. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father. Father's going to love those who do what Jesus says. It, it's so uh, intertwined, isn't it? It's so um, it's so um, perfectly arranged. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. 
and I will love him, manifest myself to him. Yes. The will of the Father is that we do what Jesus uh, says. Because Jesus done what Father says. And the Holy Ghost does what Jesus said. The Holy Ghost will speak of Jesus. That's in John 16. I see how the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost operate perfectly together. John 16 and the verse is fourteen. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. We see that there, don't we? Jesus has a father again. And the Holy Ghost will take of what is Jesus and declare it. You never can tell. Never can tell. There's people out there, man, Lord, 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 Lord. Especially those Pentecostals in America. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. And they cast out demons, and they prophesy, and they do wonders. In his name. But he'll declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Right? Depart from me. I don't want to know you. And we see it says, Depart from me. We don't see or read here where these are worldly people and they're just coming and they're saying, oh, you know, open the door to us. These are people who cast out devils. These are people who prophesied. These people have done wonders. The people of the world, they don't cast out demons. They don't prophesy and they don't do wonders in his name. They don't even use the name. People of the world, the only time they use the name of Jesus when they hit their thumb with a hammer. Hey? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. That's to walk the will, W-I-L-L, to walk in the light of the Lamb. That's keeping the commands of Christ. W-I-L-L, walk in the light of of the Lamb. That's the will of the Father. That we adhere to His Son, Jesus, the Christ. Let's go over to Second Samuel. 
Second taste of lemon, shall we? Second taste of lemon. Let's see what we got there. Five. Second taste of lemon. That one day's aliens. I made that one day's aliens. Five. Twenty one. Test all things. How fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who, is, who also will do it. Brethren, Pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. This epistle be read to all the holy brethren. They could have given it to the other brethren, but the holy brethren. Hey. So, how fast the one is good. Test all things. You never can tell. We have to test. We have to test all things to see if it's if it's wholesome, no good eating bad food in the spirit. It has to be wholesome. Even gluten-free is good. Gluten-free spiritual food. Well, you won't end up bloated then. Hey, test all things. Let's see if it lines up. Because if it doesn't line up, you won't be going up in the air. Okay. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. We have to test. We have to test all things to make sure that it lines up so we can go up. And Acts. We go over to Acts 17. Verse 11. Hey. <coughs> it's 
and easy there. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Searching of the scriptures, daily, searching the scriptures, to see if those things were so. Excuse me. Searching of the scriptures. Receiving the word with all readiness. Receiving the word with all readiness and searching the scriptures. A lot of people are, are very quick to um, receive things, but they don't press through and sieve through it. Press on and see if it's if it's um, legit. See if it's biblical. A good just taking anything. Uh, that's what the Roman Catholics do. They they just take whatever's said by the imposter priest and they just suck it up and he's up there reading out of a book some man concocted uh, prayer book and then he might go back to a bible of some description and read something that he doesn't elaborate on expound upon so that's why the Roman Catholic people are so deceived. Because they never checked. They received what was said readily. But they didn't search the scriptures to see if it was so. You never can tell, can you? Until you search. Only those who do the will of, of Father. Hey? They might have a King James Bible and say that they're born again. They say, oh, I'm saved by grace, baptised in water, he says. Hey? They go to church on Saturday with their family and friends. But after you hear them speak, you know they're not born again. Oh, say la vie, say the old folk. Goes to show you never can tell. Right? After hearing them speak, you, you know they're not born again. Because what comes out of their mouth doesn't line up. Doesn't line up with script. If it don't line up with script, you're in trouble. Script is our pathway to heaven. Once we get off the beaten track, right? we're in a lot of trouble. We're in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. You can read that those two verses a hundred times a day and the Lord will speak to you. Well, the Lord speaks to me. I can just read those two verses over and over 
and while I'm reading, I can see in the spirit two distinct roads and you can't be on both of them. We can only walk one road at a time. The wide gate, the wide road, it's broad, it's easy. Many go in there by, many take that road. Wherever I see many people at a church, and I mean many, I always have my doubts of whether the, the true word is there. I really do, especially, especially in these days. Especially in these days. Hey? Few find the narrow gate. Difficult is the way which leads to life. And you tell me who likes difficult. And you put your hand up if you like difficult. No one, no one likes difficult. <laughs> Everyone's out there today, right now. They're going out now, early this morning. They're heading out. And what's the objective? What's their objective? They're going out early morning to get the, the edge on the day. And, and what's the objective? To make life easier for them. And if they have a family, for them and their family. Easy is, is, is what people are looking for. The uncomfortable lounge chair they have is not soft enough. They want a, a softer lounge chair. They want a lounge chair that does more things. It only goes back and forward, spins around. They want a lounge chair that does wheel stands, you know. <laughs> okay, what other lounge chair have we got? Well, we've got one that vibrates. It's a, it's a massage, it's a, a massage and, and a, a recliner and a a bed all in one. It does everything. It goes right back. You don't even have to go up to bed, to your bedroom. You just go to sleep there. Sit there for a while. Then turn the massager on. And doze off. And set the time on the, on the massage. And it, then it stops. And then you're asleep. Don't even have to go upstairs. Easy. Many take the easy, the broad, the wide is the gate that led it to destruction. This is what the Lord says in two verses. Powerful, two powerful verses. And the narrow road is opposite. It's, it's totally the opposite. It's difficult and narrow. Not many people can fit on a narrow road. Eh? They have to line up one behind the other. Follow. Eh? You never can tell. You never can tell. You think you're talking to, to, to Christians, but you're not. <laughs> you, think, you think you can... Uh, 
you think you can tell, but you can't. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom, but those who do the will of the Father. Huh? How many times have I thought I was talking to a Christian only to find out down the road or a little later when they open their mouth, huh? they weren't even born again. Not from above anyway, but they were born again of something. You know, they went to church on a Saturday with their family and friends. But after hearing him speak, you knew they weren't born again, right? They had a King James Bible. They said they were saved by grace and baptised in water. Right? Say la vie, say the old folk. It goes to show you never can tell, right? And uh, I mentioned it last Sunday briefly about a young chappy that done no job for me. And uh, cost me quite a bit of money too, but he never done the job properly. And he told me, told me later on, I gave him my testimony booklet and, and literature. Made him something to eat. He spent quite a bit of time doing the job for me. Made him a nice coffee. And, uh, yeah. Blow me down later on, he tells me he's a Christian. He goes to Grace Exchange Church, North Brisbane. This chappy, uh, Chris Craig. Anyway, he never done the job. <laughs> he spent all those hours, but he never he never done the job properly. I can tell you now. But he never had any conviction whatsoever to drive away and leave uh, my vehicle in the state it was. Never had any conviction. Never even mentioned it. it. It was a terrible thing to witness. So I had to go to the uh, company manager. Apparently he has a franchise, or so he said. I had to go to the company manager and ring him. He said he didn't have a talk to him, but I don't know what's going to happen there. But I said to the manager, I said, look, I said, this guy half done the job. And another person said to me, after they looked at it, they said, that's not even average, that's under average, but yet he says five star, four star, look I wouldn't give him two stars. From the moment he left, I kept, you know, as you get in your car and you look here and look there, it's never ending story, but you never can tell, can you? These days, it doesn't matter. People say they're Christian. I tell you what, I, I, don't, I don't flinch anymore. When they say they're Christian, I think, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if that's true. As I mentioned about Israel Folau on Sunday too, Christian, they say they're Christian. Look at the, their, the way they operate and their practices and they're terrible. These are the last days. 
Okay, doesn't matter if they're brandishing a King James Bible and they say they're saved by grace and baptised and go to church on Saturday. Okay, they've done this and done that. When you see what comes out of their mouth and the way they operate, you know they're not born again. Because a true born again person wouldn't behave like that. Because they're born from above, from God. They're not born of any other spirit. They're not workers of iniquity. They don't practice lawlessness. When you do a job and you do it properly, you're worth your dollar. But if you do a job for someone and it's not done properly, you're not worth your wages. It's as simple as that. Back in the day, if you'd done work for people and it wasn't right, they just didn't pay you. That was it. But it's a lot, it's a lot different today. They just go into hiding. I contacted this young man who was with the um, Grace Exchange. I mean, what a name. And he's behaving like that. He said he's 14 years a Christian, this young bloke, this Chris Craig. And he behaves like that. And I, I contacted him uh, seven times. I sent him, oh, let me say, one time there about five texts in a row. There's no reply. He just seems to just disappeared. <laughs> That's why I had to ring the um, company manager of the, the, the actual company based in Logan. Dear, oh dear. Hey? It's so sad. Just cowboys, They're people who in these days calling themselves mechanics, calling themselves car detailers, calling themselves house painters. They call themselves anything. Pastors. Oh, how do you know he's a pastor? Oh, he's got a piece of paper. That's the biggest hogwash I've ever heard. He's a pastor because he's got a piece of paper and some bloke who charged him two, three, four grand to get the piece of paper, seen him fit to be a pastor. That was a man seen a man, or a woman seen a woman, or a woman seen a man, or a man seen a woman fit to be a pastor. So they had a fancy piece of paper printed with their name on it, and they signed it at the bottom and they're called Reverend Dr. Father Mother, and they signed it, and therefore they are. <laughs> no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Even in the world, OK, I, I can accept that in the world. Someone's done four years, they've learnt the trade, the trade and the craft, and they get a bit of paper, but not all them are legit either. They're shabby and like an old trades. But um, in the Lord's uh, in the Lord's ministry, you just can't do that. There ha it ha you have to be called. He's faithful to call and meet the call. And he gave some, some. He gave some. Let's read it in Ephesians. He gave some. Ephesians. You know where I'm going. Down to Ephesians 4.11. My Bible says, and he gave some to be apostles, 
prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the equipping of the saints. Okay? For the equipping of the saints. He gave it to them. They didn't learn it. They didn't work for it. They didn't do anything for it. He gave some to be. It's a gift to be a pastor or a prophet or an evangelist. And if you are one of them, you'll have signs following each specific position. <laughs> hey. <clears throat> yes, so you never can tell. These days you never can tell. You've got to check things out. Go over to 1 John. Let's see what we got there. 1 John. John and uh, way down the back here, chapter 4, and we'll read 1 John 4 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You see that? Many false proclaimers. Many, how many? Many. Many have gone out. They're false. You never can tell. Eh? He had a King James Bible and he said that he was born again. He was saved by grace and baptized in water, he said. Went to church on Saturday with his family and friends. But after hearing him speak, he just knew he wasn't born again. Say la vie, say the old folk, goes to show you never can tell. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Do not, I like that, do not believe. Every spirit but test the spirits. Right? Why are you talking about spirits here? You're not talking about whiskey or bourbon. He's talking about spirits. Right? Uh, did you know there's a spirit? speaking to you when someone speaks <laughs> when a so called preacher a so called minister is in a pulpit there's a spirit talking to you you might see a person standing there that's just the outer coating isn't it the flesh is just the outer coating but there's actually a spirit moving through that person. That spirit is ministering to you. Now we have to test that. We have to test what that spirit is saying through those people. What are they saying? Is it true? Does it? Line up with Jesus' doctrine. If you don't run a check on these doctrines, you're going to end up being overtaken by that spirit and it's going to convince you. And it's going to lead you either to heaven or hell. Hey, which one's it going to be? You never can tell. <laughs> say la vie. Say la vie, say the old folk. Say la vie. Brother Philippe will know what I'm talking about. Say la vie, say the old folk. Goes to show you never can tell. Beloved, 
Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Hey? Whether they are of God. Well, I know one thing, the spirit that is of God agrees with what's written in the Christ doctrine. Because the Holy Spirit, we read before in John 16, 14, he will back what Jesus says. No one else. Hey? Let's go back to John. John 16. See what it says. Hey? John 16. My Bible says. John 16. Verse 14. He will glorify me and he will take of what is mine and declare. See, declare. He will declare it to you. So the Spirit will be speaking. Hey? One scripture says, don't bother about what you're going to say when uh, you have to and you come to time of counsel because it won't be you speaking it'll be your father speaking <laughs> oh look I tell you you never can tell so we gotta we gotta be um, diligent to test the spirits plural what's there's that many spirits going on isn't there <laughs> that many spirits happening today, you're definitely going to be deceived because there's so many spirits if you're not focused and separated, sanctified, separated unto the Lord. Eh? It leaves too much wriggle room if you're not sanctified, if you're not separated unto the Lord and you're not uh, following and doing what he says doing what the Lord says leaves too much wriggle room for spirits plural to get in and start ministering to you and through you you never can tell uh, so every time someone gets in a pulpit, they start speaking straight away. Look, I can listen to a person in a pulpit for a very short time and I can tell you what spirit. Not exactly what spirit, but I can tell you if it's the Holy Spirit because I know the Holy Spirit personally and I know Jesus personally and I know Father personally and these three are one but they are three <laughs> hey? hallelujah you listen carefully and you'll hear another voice that's what the Lord tells us You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. You'll have the confirmation time and time and time again. Paradise Now Church, Jesus the Christ Ministries mission is renowned. It's known for confirmation of the word from the pulpit weekly, weekly. It's always confirmed one way or another or many ways. So, um, let's go over to, uh, let's go to Genesis. We'll zip over to Genesis at the front of the good, good book. So 
and we're the people of the book, aren't we? Genesis chapter 3. And we'll start in verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God said, God said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not die. You will not surely die. Right? How's that one? For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You see that? This woman was told by God, God said, This woman knew the voice of God. God said. Because she said that it was God that said. It was God that told her. God said, basically, God said to me, not to eat or even touch the fruit in the midst of the garden, lest you would die. And straight away, The devil said to the woman, you will not surely die. So what do we have there? We have contrary words, don't we? The the, the advice is conflicting. (laughs) God said, don't touch it. Don't eat it. And you have to touch something before you eat it, unless you're like, Unless you're in a um, competition with eating apples out of a barrel, you know, they don't use their hands, do they? They put their head in the apple bobbing, apple bobbing competition. Eve wasn't in an apple bobbing competition. And she put her head into the 44 gallon drum full of water with apples floating on it, see how many apples she could get out with her mouth. No, she touched it. So there's a double emphasis. She touched the, the fruit and then she ate it, sunk her teeth in and ate it. But then the devil said straight away, you will not die. But God said you would. See the, the difference there? You see the two spirits? Huh? You see that rebel spirit? It conflicts with scripture. Test the spirits. God was behind one. What God said. God was behind what he said. And then the devil was behind. The devil himself. Said no you won't die. And what does the devil say today? You can't lose your salvation. Your relationship with God won't die. Don't be silly. (laughs) That's what the devil says, doesn't he? It's once saved, always saved. Say la vie, say the old folk. Goes to show you never can tell. He had a King James Bible and he said that he was born again. He was saved by grace, baptized in water, he said. Went to church on Saturday with his family and friends. But after hearing him speak, you knew he wasn't born again. Say la vie, say the old folk, cause a show you never can tell. You never can tell, can you, until you look into it. And see, the spirit of the devil is behind 
everything that's contrary to what God says. Now, does God say he, he, that Jesus has a father? Do the scriptures say Jesus has a father? In the last three months, we have been reading at the church and, and most of the time not even trying to find scriptures that say Jesus has a father, but they're just everywhere. They're just everywhere. Remember last Sunday we we had a we had a look at um, Ephesians. Then there's something about the scripture that I really love. It just it just puts up a roadblock, doesn't it? You can't get around it. You can't get around this one. Uh, in Genesis, I should say, <laughs> Ephesians. Ephesians, um, let's go over there. Ephesians 3 1. Oh, sure. Sorry, sorry about that. It's Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now if someone speaks contrary to that, it's the devil. <laughs> it's the wolf. It's the wolf. He knows, he knows. Remember that cartoon? It's the wall of the little lamb. The little lamb. Yeah, it's the wall of, it's the wall of. And the sheepdog says, he knows, he knows. Oh, no, no. The wall of says, he knows. And the big old sheepdog's sitting there watching. Hey, protecting the lamb. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And what about verse 2? That's another one. Ephesians 1 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you like that too? I do. So does Jesus have a father? So if Jesus has a father, who are these people that say Jesus doesn't have a father and they say Jesus is the father? Who are they? They're of the devil. <laughs> They're speaking contrary to established writ. They're dishonest. Test every spirit. Listen to the doctrine and you'll know the spirit. God said, the serpent said, hey? God said, don't touch it, don't eat it. The serpent said, yeah, it's okay, you're not going to die. You will not surely die. You will not. The God said you will. See? The devil speaks contrary to Jesus. The true Jesus. Because there's many Jesuses, isn't there? As they say. <laughs> there's many Jesuses. Two Corinthians eleven four, for if he who comes preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, 
you may well put up with it. By that, by that verse, we know there's other Jesuses and there's other spirits. Hey? And there's other gospels. This gospel means message. Or a different gospel. Gospel means message. What's the message they're putting out there in the churches today at large? It's a message of uh, prosperity, money, gain. It's a message of mammon. It's a message of uh, a one-strand cord. Hey? Not a three-strand cord. It's all just... Love, 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 dun dun dun, love, 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 dun dun dun, love, love, love. It's easy, dun 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 dun. dun. All you need is love, dun 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 dun. All you need is love. All you need is love, love, love is all you need. Does that Jesus say that? Is that the Spirit? The Holy Ghost say that? Well, we know Paul McCartney, he he doesn't know Jesus. He doesn't know the Holy Spirit. He doesn't know the Father. He's a pagan. We know that, but how successful. Boy, you'd think God was with him, wouldn't you? You know what I mean? You'd think God was with him. Look at all that money. Great success. Destined. For what? Hell? Hey? Does Paul McCartney sing about Jesus? No, he doesn't sing about Jesus. And nor does John Lennon. And not a George Harrison. He, Harrison sang of Hare Krishna. My sweet Lord, Hare Hare, oh my Lord, I really want to know you, Hare Hare. <laughs> you never can tell, can you? Goes to show you never can tell. Right? C'est la vie, say the old folk. Goes to show you never can tell. Other Jesus, other spirits, and other doctrines. Test the spirit. Test the spirit. Let's go to uh, Galatians. Eh? Let's have a look at Galatians. See what we got there. Galatians, Galatians. We go way back, way back here, Galatians, and we go to Galatians 3, Galatians 3 and verse 1, my Bible says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now becoming ma- being made perfect by the flesh? Hey? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? 
foolish Galatians. They were born again. These were born again. And we have a spirit operating here. But Paul didn't know the name of the spirit. He just said, Who has bewitched you? He didn't name the specific witchcraft or the specific demon. <laughs> the specific spirit. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Well, we just read in Genesis, didn't we? We just read in Genesis. The devil told Eve not to obey. Didn't he? But Jesus told Eve, God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, Yahweh, was all concealed back then and things became more clearer as the word went on <coughs> to the New Testament where everything was revealed. Because <coughs> the old <coughs> is the new concealed and the New Testament is the old revealed. And so God said, obey. And the devil said, you don't have to obey. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? And how many spirits are out there today? How many people saying you don't have to obey the word of God to be saved? It, it's not mandatory to obey the word of God to be saved. How many churches say that? How many so-called prophets say that? And many false prophets have gone out. Hey? Many false prophets have gone out, as we read in our verses today. <coughs> hey? Many false prophets. They've gone out and they've told another story altogether. It's another message. It's not the message of God Almighty. I'll just read that one more time. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified, right before their very eyes. Hey? But yet, the spirits are stronger, aren't they? When we're not strong, hey? when we're not strong, you say, oh, they didn't really know the Lord. Galatians 3, 2. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? <coughs> they received the Holy Ghost. But yet they were bewitched. They were lied to. And they were told, you don't have to obey him. Hey? This cunning spirit bewitched him in such a way that they didn't think they were obligated to obey what Jesus said. Hey? And we were in Corinthians just before. We go back there to Corinthians. Um, 2 Corinthians 11. We 
where it says, um, Two Corinthians eleven. Yeah. And it says verse three But I fear at least somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. <laughs> somehow. Here's Paul again. Eh? He's asking in Galatians 3 1, Who has bewitched you? And then he's saying here, Somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve. See? Not even Paul knew all the, the devices of, of the devil, the way he does things. The great Paul. Look, Paul the Apostle was, I reckon he's with the, he was one of the greatest men ever to live outside of Jesus, of course, you know. <laughs> he's so great, Jesus. I mean, he's God. As Father is God and as the Holy Ghost is God, as the Godhead is is. Uh, God, hey. So the Galatians, uh, who, who has bewitched you? Somehow, hey. somehow, this has happened. And uh, you never can tell, can you? So many people over the years and decades, as I've ministered, I've seen these people. He's like that young chappy the other day from the... Um, from the uh, Australian detailing group. It's supposed to do the job on my car properly and he didn't do it. And uh, oh, he was so nice, sweet as pie. But you never can tell. And then the next day, boy, oh boy, when he found out, I don't believe in one saved, always saved. Well, he's called himself a Christian 14 years in. And when he found out, somehow he just changed. It was like Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> it was like... Jekyll and Hyde. As soon as he found out, I believe you can forfeit your salvation. As soon as I said, there's no such thing in the Bible as a woman pastor. It's hogwash. He didn't like it. His nose was put out of joint. Because he goes to Grace Exchange Church, North Brisbane. And they have a woman pastor, Dave and Rebecca Cooper. And it's written, Pastor David and Pastor Rebecca. And she's up there dictating to the men. I said, show me, can you show me in the scriptures where there's women pastors? I said, what sort of job did Eve do? She had a shot at being a pastor. Oh, you can't go saying that, he said. I said, well, okay, let's leave that and let's move on. Let's go down to Timothy and see what Timothy says. Paul said to Timothy that a pastor, an overseer or a bishop, whatever, must be the husband of one wife. He didn't like that either. I said, "Is she a husband of one wife? Is she a, is is she lesbian? Because they're husbands of one wife. You got Anglican lesbian priests. We heard about that a few couple of months ago. And she's got a, a wife, and she's playing the part of the husband, right? 
How can that be? A woman pastor, a pastor, an overseer, a bishop must be the husband of one wife. It's, it can't change, but you never can tell which way they're coming from, can you? You just got to really examine it. You got to test it, spirits, and check the scriptures to see if it is so. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, somehow as the serpent deceived Eve. <laughs> Crafty, see? By his craft, by his craftiness. So your minds may be corrupted. See? That's the Copelands and the Hens and the Joyce Myers, Jerry Savelle, Kenneth Copeland. Gloria Copeland, corrupt your mind and take you off on a tangent where you won't be saved, where he'll say, go away from me. I do not know you, you who practice sin, you who practice lawlessness. You may have cast out demons in my name and prophesied. You may have done wonders but you're not mine. See that? You never can tell. Say la vie. Say the old folk. Goes to show you never can tell. What about we finish up on uh, in in Revelation? Can we go to Revelation? I, I like it there. No? Revelation. I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 3 and the verse is 16. My Bible says, let's read, let's start at 15. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Verse 17. Because you say I'm rich, I've become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> I counsel you to buy from me gold refined. Gold refined is the word, and... To buy it is to give up your sin. If you give up your sin, he'll give you the gold. You give up your sin, he'll show you clearly. You give up your sin, uh, you'll get the gold refined in the fire, or even like silver in a furnace seven times. You get the pure word from him if you give up your sin. Your known sin, that is. You can't give up unknown sin because you don't know what it is. <laughs> so there you have it. Who would have thought they, these people, this church, of the, they were a church of the Lord, the, the church of the Laodicea. Who would have ever thought they were on the brink of rejection? They were on the eve of destruction. Tell me over and over and over and over again that this church was on the brink of destruction. <laughs> hey? Tell me over and over and over and over again that the Laodiceans were on the eve of destruction. And there it is, written. You never can tell, huh? So, we don't want to get bogged down because someone's brandishing a King James, King Jimmy Bible. He had a King James Bible and he said that he was born again. He was saved by grace, baptized in water, he said. Went to church on Saturday with his family and friends. 
But after hearing him speak, you knew he wasn't born again. Say la vie, say the old folk, it goes to show you never can tell. So we got to search it out, haven't we? Got to search it out, dear listeners. Search them out. And I like people to judge me. I like people to ask me questions. I like people to say, well, what does it say here, Pastor Paul? It says no one will snatch us out of his hand. I fully believe, I teach the same thing. No one's going to snatch you out of God's hand. But I tell you one thing. You, through known sin, can be rejected. You can be vomited out of his mouth. You can be thrown in the fire, John 15, 1 to 6, emphasizing verse 6. It's mandatory to be saved. It's mandatory to obey to be saved. Hebrews 5, 9, Luke 8, 21. The word of God is clear. Check the scriptures. We have to test the spirits behind the person speaking. Is it the Holy Spirit or is it an unholy spirit? Does Jesus have a father? Let's, let's test the spirit. Of course Jesus has a father. You don't have to go any further than Ephesians chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. It would be overkill to go to Revelation 3, 5, 12 and 21 because they say they talk of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. And of course John 14, 21 to 24 makes it clear that Jesus has a Father. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thee. Who said that? Jesus. He was humble, you know, Jesus, in case you missed it. Jesus was very humble. He said, our Father. He, he, He numbered himself with them. He said, the disciples. He said, our Father. This is how you pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Where was he? On earth. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yeah. Goes to show you never can tell. Say la vie, say the old folk. <laughs> he had a King James Bible and he said that he was born again. He was saved by grace, baptized in water, he said. Went to church on Saturday. With his family and friends. But after hearing him speak, you knew he just wasn't born again. So I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm going to have a wonderful day. And I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. And I'll leave you with one more uh, word. And that is, blessed are you when you're persecuted for doing the right thing. Blessed are you when you pay people to do a job and they don't do it. The Spirit of God and of glory will rest upon thee. Everybody said, Amen. Thank you, Jesus.